Hey, I'm Derek. And I'm Noah, and you're listening to A Bite Of, where we take our current favorite pop culture obsession and enjoy it one nibble at a time. One nibble. In this case, three nibbles of each episode of X-Men 97. (laughs) Yes. Uh, (laughs) Pretend you are 12 years old again, and you have a variety pack of chips. So they're small, and you might eat more than one. Oh, yeah. And so we're eating three different types of chips. <laughs> we, you know, people had asked, they're like, are you doing X Men? There's three episodes in, and there's not been an episode. We did three body problem. There's a lot of threes going on. Um, but we wanted to do it, and we're doing it now. We're at the X Mansion. We're here. Of course, we're going to talk about it. The like sexiest, the most nostalgia ridden MCU property ever come out do you want abs because we've got abs okay do you want crop tops because we've got crop tops so many do you want long ponytails we got them. oh my god so much cannot wait to talk about this before we get into it the normal housekeeping stuff leave a review also patreon support the show like the show patreon but also if you don't want to like give money give stars that's great that's a good way to keep the lights on and the mics on oh yeah (laughs) <laughs> Both of those are very important to us. Also, if you have thoughts or anything you want to share about what you're currently obsessing about X-Men 97, anything, abonibbles at Gmail. Our email is open. We have mailbags. We want to open them. Go ahead and send them and to us. And it's free postage. Yeah. <laughs> it's email. You don't have to send us anything through the snail mail. Yeah. <laughs> free postage. Yes. So a lot to get into. We have three mm-hmm. episodes. Mm-hmm. It is going to be a lots of spoilers. Yes. So we do not want to spoil this for you. Please go watch it. They're 30 minutes long and then come back and join us. All right. So let us officially take a bite of X-Men 97 episodes one, two, and three written by Bo DeMeo and directed by Jake Castorena, Chase Conley, and Emmy Yonamura, respectively. Still reeling from the loss of their leader, Professor X, Wolverine, Cyclops, Jean Grey, Morph, Rogue, Gambit, Jubilee, Beast, Bishop, and Storm must come together to face new adversaries, including anti-mutant technology, mysterious clones, evil scientists, and love triangles. Crop tops abound. The dream of the 90s is alive in the (laughs) X-Mansion. That's literally explains all X-Men comics, just in that short little thing. It's not even X-Men 97. It's 100% just the X-Men. <laughs> X-Men is just taking love triangles and then giving the people powers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It is a mutant soap opera. Yes. Drama and powers. That is what this is. Before we get into everything, right? Do you have history with the X-Men 97? Not 97. X-Men animated show. I'm going to get these two confused. <laughs> yes, just X-Men and X-Men 97. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> I absolutely do. Yes, I loved the original X-Men show. I think actually the X-Men show is what got me into comics as a kid. And what's funny is that like when, when I watched them as an adult, those original episodes from the 90s, I don't think as a kid, I realized how serious they were. Like I was just excited for the powers and the crazy characters and the Sentinels. So to go back and watch them and now watch these X-Men 97 as an adult, you're like, there was a lot going on here. Yeah, there's a lot. And the episodes, it's funny because I think throughout my life, it's always been there, right? That, That is the thing that's always been there. And you always know that theme song in your head. You can always see the intro in it. You can always see, you know, Gene fainting every single time. (laughs) And it's one of those things where like watching it as you do get older, you're like, wow, they really like milked some of these storylines. It's a lot of like, it took a long time to get through some of this stuff. So one of the good things about this is that they, it feels like it, Mm -hmm. but like it's brisker. (laughs) Definitely. (laughs) Absolutely. Because I feel like in the old one, right? Episode three of, of this new run could have been at least four episodes. I mean, Storm. You know, spoilers right out the gate. Storm losing her powers and looking out a window could have been a couple episodes. Like, <laughs> totally. That's how, that's how it was structured. We could have seen her write the letter in real yeah. time. <laughs> but there is just that, that feeling of, you know, I think most people our age, this is the thing that got them into comics. Or it's always, we know that, right? It's like 
Batman, Superman, mm. X-Men, and Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Those are the things we know because that's what we grew up with. And there's just such a fun feeling of like Fox Kids. Yes. Serial Saturday mornings or whenever you could watch it, but Saturday mornings and just like living with those characters. Yes. I love now knowing what they mean mm. and what they were trying to say. And this carries through. I want to know, though, when you were younger, who was your favorite character watching it? You know, I liked the blue people. Beast and Nightcrawler and Mystique were always my favorite. Or- yeah, I liked Mystique because, like, she's cool and I love those powers. But, like, Nightcrawler, I always, I don't know if it's because I grew up in, like, a religious household and everything. So I could kind of, like, mm. it was, like, familiar to mm-hmm, me. Mm-hmm. But I loved Beast. It's like he doesn't look like he would be so nice. And so gentle and he is and he's super smart he's delightful yeah i really like him in this mm. uh for me so i think that when i was trying to be you know not a homosexual as a kid i was like cyclops is my favorite but in reality storm is my favorite yeah storm is still your favorite i had a storm action figure she had a, li- a see-through lightning bolt on her chest and you press the button on her back it lit up that is really cool it was <sighs> awesome I had some action figures, but it was like the ones I didn't care about. Like at the time, like Wolverine and Cyclops and Gene. I was like, Ugh. I had a Cyclops too. And he, he spoke that Cyclops. Of course he did. Yeah. He never stops. <laughs> he really, he really is the straight man yeah, of yeah. the group. He's Mr. Serious. So getting into this new incarnation or continuation, I should say, because it's 97. That's like a few months after the mm. original series ends. The really cool thing about this is not only is it, the first property under Marvel's animation banner, but it's outside of the MCU canon, but a continuation of something that happened 30 years ago. Yeah. And so myself, and I know a few people were hesitant with it, right? It's like, how are you going to be able to capture those things that captured people then to now Mm -hmm. and continue it? Like, not that you have to prove why you're doing it, but are you going to be able to do that? I, Right. I'm just going to say it. I think they did and exceeded my expectations with it. Yeah, absolutely. I for sure was leaning into the nostalgia of this. I mean, I think of someone who is on the precipice of being 40 years old. I am looking (laughs) back to the things that keep me young. And this is one of those things. So I was immediately excited about this. And I think that having some of the original voice cast coming, hearing those voices, it's just tethering us to the property. And I think that they're still bringing that drama. They're still bringing these characters. But the animation now is so much more crisp and so fast. These fight scenes are incredible. Yeah, it's it's interesting, right? Whenever it's not like a fight scene and stuff, it kind of, the show gives me like a lo-fi feel to it Mm. almost. Um, And the the animation is amazing. But there's just like cool camera movements that, that they do with this animation to fight scenes are so fast and it's like i don't know what i was expecting but i'm so glad that they're showcasing what they can do yeah and my favorite thing about these fight scenes particularly the first one cyclops the first or i guess i should say the sentinel one the Mm -hmm. big one with the whole team is that we got to see them work so well as a team like that's what i want that's what i want of the x-men it's like they live together they teach together they fight crime together. They need to be like a well-oiled machine. They cry together. And they, and they sleep together. Ooh, babies. <laughs> Multiple of them. Mm-hmm. But that's what I want to see, right? We see Gambit, you know, putting his powers on Wolverine's claws and then Morph turning into Blob and then shooting him up. I'm like, yes, this is what I want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that when we saw the, the fight before it, uh, when they're rescuing whose sunspot, sunspot. Ev- eventually, but he's just known as Roberto at this time. Uh, when we see Cyclops come in and he is like black, like what is, what are, I always just thought of them as lasers, no. but they're like, per, what is, what is it called? <laughs> so I'm just going to explain it this way. So Gail Simone, who's going to be writing the X-Men, she's a phenomenal writer. She likes to go on Twitter and say things that like, if you know, you know. And so she did a poll of who has the best heat vision, Superman or Cyclops. And people that know Cyclops, it's not heat. heat vision, yeah. It's not. It's concussive force. Concussive. So it's more of like a, a force and not necessarily yeah. like heat. You it know what feels I mean? more like it's solid. Like it could he, punch you in the face. Yes. He uses it to push. Right. And I think that what was so cool is that he was really 
manipulating his surroundings with it and moving around the place, which was so cool. And then later on, when they're going to the Sahara to uh, fight the Sentinels and 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 Trask, uh, he uses it. He's falling from the plane and you're thinking, why is no one saving him? And he uses it to, I don't know, stop himself from to dying <laughs> to get his superhero landing. What do you mean? You don't know. That's what it He's was just like. Dee! It was so cool. <laughs> that whole scene. I mean, there's just so many. I feel like at the end of this, we just need to do like a top 10 moments from the season because there's so much things that happen so quickly, but are just so cool. Like I really liked in that scene, Rogue having to like carry two people. Yes. She's like holding Beast by his underpants because that's the only thing that she can grab onto. But the, his superhero landing is so cool. Speaking of Cyclops, Cyclops has a tried history through fans and comics and everything. I have been one of them of not being on Scott Summer's side. I have my feelings about him. This makes me love him. Mm -hmm. I love him. I, I know his character. I know his, his type of leader. I know that he wants to be the best he can. He's going to make mistakes. But like, you can tell he really cares about them. And also, he's cool as hell in this. I, he wasn't cool before. He's no. cool now. <laughs> yeah. I think that seeing him in action is where he gets his cool points. When he's not in his full, you know, Cyclops mode, when it's the drama, he's very cut and dry. He seems like he's very black and white. And that's when he sort of loses points. Mm. When you're kind of like, oh boy, here he goes again. Here's dad to ruin the fun. Right. <laughs> Even Literally. during beignets. Yeah. <laughs> Let him make his beignets. <laughs> Gambit's like, Gambit's making beignets. And he's like, Gambit, not your beignets. <laughs> <laughs> so, Adam... <laughs> So speaking of like the the show before and the show now, do you feel like if you didn't watch the original, would you like understand what's going on? Like, do you think they did, they did a good job to where you don't have to do that? Because remember, they have to like capture like my brother's age mm -hmm. audience, you know, yeah. the ones that are like 18 now. <laughs> I think so. I think they give you enough of it in the sense that, you know, the the show opens up with saying like, Xavier is dead. You know, he's been assassinated. And we're like, oh, okay, got it. You know, yeah, I forgot. I remember now. Jean's pregnant and, you know, Cyclops is there. And then we also see our friend Wolverine kind of fawning in the background. So <laughs> I think they lay the work right. for us to know the major plot points that we have going on here. Although I don't think you would know what the Sentinels are. So mm. that's the only thing I think, only thing I think you would be lost on. Yeah, it might be one of those things where they're just such an iconic image where it's like, okay, I get it. They're big robots that want to extinct, like kill mm -hmm. and all of mutants. I, I liked it. I think that they did it in subtle ways as far as like in the intro, they change it every episode a little bit and you get some of those big storylines like the Dark Phoenix saga and you see some of that and it's yeah. like, oh, I've seen that image before. I get what that means. Yeah. We even so got like the sewer those. people. Yeah. We got the sewer people. We, yes. The, the warlocks. The leech made an appearance. Yeah. Ugh, little leech. He reminds me of Dobby. The third person thing. <laughs> How dare you? He does. <laughs> leech is better than He's Dobby. like, don't hurt leech. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. He does talk in that, that manner. Yeah. So as far as the stories go, they are taking huge stories. One particular, I guess, more in the third episode with Inferno with Madeline Pryor and Jean, the clone, and Nathan and Cyclops. It's a big, long story, and they condensed it down into really one episode. And I'm loving that what I think that they're doing, even just based off of some of the titles, is that they're taking these big events or these massive things throughout the history of X-Men mm. and kind of condensing them. But they're doing it in a way where each one kind of flows into the next one. It's yeah. really smart. It's smart storytelling that they're, they're doing. They're giving us cliffhangers at the ends of all of these, right? And so in the first one, it's the appearance of Magneto saying that uh, Professor X has given him everything. And then, you know, I mean, we, we, I'm just going to bring it up now. The, the, the lush, the gorgeous, the skin tight purple Magneto outfit. Ooh. He said jumpsuit sleeveless with opera length gloves. <laughs> I went through some things watching this and it was like, everybody in here is hot. Oh, everybody yeah. in here will show lots of skin, right? It's like, we got Gambit and the crop top Oof. making beignets. And I was uh. like, what are they doing? 
in this. Like, he doesn't. Okay. He doesn't fear the <laughs> splattering oil from the deep fryer. But, <laughs> not on those apps. No. But then when Magneto came in, I was like, okay, he's like updated a little bit. He updated his look. When you see him in the second episode, in just that outfit, in the big M outfit, and the way he still talks and does these monologues and soliloquies and everything, and it's like they didn't have a right to make Magneto. So fine. <laughs> he said, M is for mother. <laughs> M is for magnificent. <laughs> look at this baby. <laughs> yeah, he's giving grand speeches. He's like, look, I know I've, you know, done crimes against humanity, but my friend Professor X said, stop. <laughs> so I'm going to. I mean, let him. <laughs> let him. I love a complicated villain, but it gets complicated when that villain is very good looking. <laughs> the <laughs> hair? <laughs> speeches like he does i do want to talk like for one second i just love when you see him when he goes into professor x's um office and he's reading his last will and testament and it is a tome i did like did he itemize everything that is so professor x he's like i'm gonna get this bound in leather make sure you have like metal clasps on the edge so that they don't get dented oh my <laughs> gosh that was a fancy last will and testament I, also, I want one. Well, okay. It'll be this big. We'll get on it. I want it. Yeah, I have, I have nothing to leave to you. We're going to leave it to our Patreon members. You're in our... <laughs> Do you want our plants? <laughs> Do you want... <laughs> we'll leave you these microphones. <laughs> They're not cheap. No, that's what I'm saying. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, but, okay, going back, we'll get back to Magneto. Uh, they definitely do a good job of connecting these episodes, right? And then, and then at the end of episode two, we have the cliffhanger of the, you know, extra gene, gene dose. Oh, my God. You, one I forgot we were talking about because Magneto just scrambled my brain. Um, you knew who the real gene was by her fainting within two seconds of being on screen. <laughs> So <laughs> she, I need the X Men. I don't understand. I love her, but like, no, girl. And so I have a problem. <laughs> I, I've been thinking about this, and it really bothers me that one of the most powerful mutants that is like on the level of Professor X happens to be a woman, and every time she uses her powers, she faints. Well, yeah. I mean, I think that just might be one of the times, and two, if you have this person that can literally stop a fight in two seconds of it happening they always have to make these things of like they can't use it that much or they can do like this one cool thing of like bringing everybody out of dante's inferno and then she has to like take a nap mm -mm -mm. <laughs> it's the whole 11 effect from stranger things right. which i always talk about right uh i and it's funny because i do feel like the Oh, you know, these, these female members of this group are just incredibly strong. They're so, I mean, literally, and just in every sense of the word. Yes. Yes, They're amazing. absolutely. And I do think it's funny because I'm like, sometimes I'm watching, I'm like, why doesn't Rogue just take her gloves off? <laughs> right. Like they're, they're like waiting to cue Storm up to do something really cool. It's like, just let her electrocute them immediately. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she could, but you know, she has her issues with it. And Lenore Zan doing Rogue again is like, it's, it's so interesting with the original cast that did come back with like Wolverine and Storm and mm -hmm. Rogue. Mm -hmm. um, they still sound like them, but time, right? But it, oddly, it's comforting. It's like, I, I still feel like it's them. Yeah. And like the other character, other voice actors that are doing the other characters of not the original ones. I, th I think they're doing great. I love that Morph's voice is different. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But I don't have an issue with any of that. I think at first I was just like, mm, like I can't not hear their voices in my head. And I was like, oh, this is, this is fine. This is fine. I think I haven't quickly watched went away. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, personally, I don't think I've watched it recently enough for me to really remember those voices. And I think the fact that Storm's voice is the same. I mean, it, you can't beat that. And it's just incredible. I mean, seeing her make the sand into glass and then make a glass tornado was just incredible. I, there's, uh, there's like, there's <laughs> three moments in these three episodes that like, I love so much. And that is one of them. Like that is the storm that is the Omega level threat that you want to see. Because at first when they all landed, I was like, where is storm? And they called in the forecast. I don't know. Like, 
The X-Men run things in Marvel. The MCU hasn't even gotten to the X-Men yet. Like they're dipping their toes in them we now. We just got a wink. We just, we're just getting them. And I'm very excited with how they're handling this. Like, yeah, they do have a jumping off pad and that like nostalgia factor. But like, if they do stuff like this, if they treat them with care, this is what the MCU, this is what Marvel needs. They need that kind of jolt of energy to get mm -hmm. people excited again. Yeah. And the X-Men are here to save that. You know, and there's such a difference uh, within an, an animated series and what they can do in 30 minutes compared to some of the Marvel you know, live action shows in 30 minutes. I mean, we're getting the drama, we're getting the character building, we're getting the action and seeing the powers. So it's, it's so much jam packed into one thing and you can't help but love it. Well, and there's also still time for like those soap opera monologues. <laughs> there's always a room somewhere where Gene <laughs> and Scott are just talking to each other. Yeah, that's what they do. Yeah. They make just, a baby and they do that. Yeah. And then, I mean, Rogue and Magneto are talking to each other. Okay. Can we talk about that for a second? Yeah, we can. Do you think, what do you think is happening there? Because like we rewatch them, obviously they're very short and it's fun to rewatch them. And I think by the third one, I was like, did, did we ever find out like what was happening with them? We haven't. No, and then I'm yet. sure there's 10 episodes, I think for the season. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure it's going to happen. But what do you think is happening between them? So there was a conversation now, now granted, as we all know, in the history of a bite of right, Noah is the comic book encyclopedia. I am a peruser, mm -hmm. so I don't know the history of these characters, but there was a conversation between Magneto and Rogue where he says, you know, have you told them who you once were? And she's like, the past stays in the past. So I'm going to let that kitty stay in that bag. <laughs> meow. What I are love we her saying? sayings. Yeah, I love uh, <laughs> So there's some history between the two of them. I don't know what it is right now, but in that moment... You know, it seems like he's the only one that can handle his skin. Yeah, I mean, he is. He creates a electromagnet, I don't know, science, powery stuff to where she can touch him. It complicates things because he can touch her. I, I think they're playing with us. I don't think that there's anything romantically now happening between them. But I think for Rogue, and that's kind of her character, right? Like, if you can just try to imagine like never being able to touch anybody, mm. I mean, at all, would probably mess with you, right? Yeah. And how's her, her whole story and how she grew up and everything. And so I'm curious if she is seeing, because she was one of the first ones to kind of defend Magneto with taking over the X-Men and being there. Um, and not just for the history, but I think she's more willing to accept that because he can give her something that she can't normally get. Mm. But I think it's more of just like, maybe they're just walking the perimeter of Xavier's school and just like holding hands because she, <laughs> you know, like, I, I don't know if anything romantic's going on. If there is, cool, another, another love triangle, but. I mean, yeah, it, it, it was a weird moment, right? Because once they come out of the office, Gambit is standing there. He thinks something is going on. And then in our next episode, Morph is looking at, you know, their touch screen outside of the training room. And it seems that Magneto and Rogue have booked like the next three days in there. More than that's a lot. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I hope I'm just saying, I hope that they're not doing anything because I need Magneto to like stay the course. I don't need him to fuck up. <laughs> Gambit's going to be real sad. I don't want Gambit to be sad. Me Gambit either. doesn't need to be sad. <laughs> Gam Listen, let's talk about Gambit for a second. Okay. okay? He's crop tops, he's abs, he's talking about himself in third person. Mm. You can't help but love the guy. He cooks yeah. beignets. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They said, don't forget. Yeah. He's from New Orleans. I do feel like out Louisiana. Of, I feel like out of everybody, even though his image is like taking over the internet by storm, I think he's the one that has like, has had the least amount of story time so far. Mm -hmm. We have so many more episodes to go through. So I'm excited to see that rogue Magneto Gambit stuff happen. But I love him. I think his powers are so cool. I mean, he was even in the 90s and before he was walking around in the bisexual flag colors. Like, you know, <laughs> like I mean, who you have to be like super confident to just be like, I'm going to have this like plated bright pink, hot pink vest and a trench coat and pull it off. Like, it's just amazing. Oh, pull He's it great. up a hundred percent. Speaking of trench coat, I also want to talk about Jubilee a little bit. Yeah. So. What I'm liking for Jubilee now is that she's no longer the youngest one, mm -hmm. right? 
So we're seeing Roberto very much going on the same ride that she went on in the original series. So she's kind of like the older sister. It's like a, it's a fun full circle moment. And I think that people, this, those are the few moments that like, if you did watch the original, you would know how cool that is mm-hmm. and the growth for that character, because she was the one that was scared and did run away. She did everything that Roberto did. And now she gets to be the one that can empathize mm-hmm. with him and recruit and also welcome more people into their family. She's the perfect person to do that. Oh, hundred so, percent. Jubilation. Amazing. Jubilation Lee. Also <laughs> dancing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love that scene. And I like, I keep thinking about that scene, especially when I think about the animation for this. It's just like, it's so cool. Like how far we've come with animation and it's like, How everything could change in certain tones of color. And then you have her powers moving. Mm -hmm. And then also the depth effect. I don't, it's just so cool. Like those little moments, I'm like, this is really cool. Like they really thought about the animation. Yeah. I, it's, it's really funny. I was really, while watching it again the second time, I was really reflecting on when Sailor Moon Crystal came out Uh and the animation was just atrocious. Well, the last season of the, x-men animated show was not great was not great but but i i guess my point is is like it's nice to see a revival of something from my childhood be (laughs) given the care that we want it to be given whereas something that i truly cherished and loved was like so wonky for the first couple of seasons something you can't defend it's like yeah i know it's bad i know (laughs) and i really tried so hard but like sometimes her eyes would be like up one up and one down (laughs) they went and fixed it later but yikes but but anyway (laughs) speaking of another update bishop getting that haircut oh got the haircut i love that bishop got the respect he deserves i like that he got scenes and showcasing his powers he's just so cool every i don't know like what there's nothing bad i can say about this show yeah i i I don't even want to call this a review because it's like we're just talking about it yeah (laughs) and it's amazing like i think the only thing it could be like oh they could have like done this storyline a little longer but like i don't care like i chop it down Give me the cool beats and let's go. Yeah. I mean, I, I, we were watching it and I was like, man, Bishop is really hot. Noah goes, they're all hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Every single one of them. They really are. I, they're really a, gorgeous. There's a couple more like really sexy moments that I want to talk about, but to just spread them out through the episode, I won't do that just yet. If you had to pick a highlight from these three, what would you, you pick? Mm. It could be anything. It doesn't even have to be like an action scene. It could be like a conversation or just a scene. A conversation or just a scene. You go first. Okay. Magneto talking to the UN. I was. That like, but not even like, not the whole scene. The whole scene's amazing, right? More when he brings them up. Yes. And he talks to them. And what a, I mean, if this man wasn't perfect already, I don't care about his wrongs. If he wasn't perfect already. He has them floating up in, I don't know, atmospheres, the stratosphere. Let's just say that it's cold. Um, Almost space in space. Pretty much. And he says, don't make me let you down. One, like literally let you down, but like, don't make me do what you think I'm going to do. Like I'm trying, I'm doing what Xavier wanted me to do. Work with me. Or it's not going to go good. But like, I just, oh my God. As soon as that happened, I was just like, amazing. Yeah. Oscar. (laughs) Yeah. When he, when he basically, you know, sort of crucifies the executioner on that giant seal and lifts him up. I was wishing that he did step on his face. I would have really loved that, especially because what he did to Storm. Yeah. Let me tell you about my least favorite moment. That, yeah. That, because my favorite X-Men, Storm. Guess who's not, ha- doesn't have any powers? Storm. Okay. I will say uh, that scene where he's like, I could crush you. And then a second, like, I just love he, Magneto's conversation really summed up what the X-Men are and kind of what they're an allegory for, what they stand for. And it's when he says, you know, Storm lost her powers and she's on the ground and she, he turns to them and he says, they've used their awesome power to not just help you, always help you. And this is what you do to them. Mm. You want them to be powerless and scared and you don't care just because they're different. And that's what the whole X-Men is about. But I will say from just what I'm thinking they're going to be doing with Storm or what I hope, there is a period of time where this kind of happens to Storm 
And she becomes so badass. She's like punk storm. And she's like extreme with hand-to-hand combat. I'm just very excited to see like this arc, even though it's like, oh, she's like the Omega level mutant. Like, come on. And you know, <laughs> like, you know who didn't need personal growth? Storm. <laughs> <laughs> and we're making her go through this. Yeah, this I mean, so annoying. That is very true. <laughs> but we're getting Forge out of it. And I love Forge yeah. so much. I can't wait to see what they do with him and like how they're going to do his powers. But he's very cool. Um, yeah, Storm, it, she does not need personal growth. And she's also like kind of the, the glue that holds the team together um, in a lot of ways. Because you saw Jean talking to her. Yeah. It's like, I need to tell you something that I can't even tell Scott. And that's who Gina is. So it's going to be really interesting to see how long she's not going to be with the team and how that affects that dynamic. Yeah, because they're a little bit in disarray Mm -hmm. at the moment when we left them off, right? So it is discovered that pregnant Gene, who has Nathan, the baby, is actually not Gene. She's clone Gene. Clone Gene. And so brimstone clone. I think that's what Magneto might have called her. (laughs) Mama, she's the goblin (laughs) queen. She is clone Jean, Brinstone clone, Goblin Queen, which she just came up with her herself. Yeah. And then Madeline Pryor. I really loved that episode. I think from like an action and like cool standpoint, oh, it was, it's just amazing. But I do want to point out Beast's bedside manner because when episode three picks up, he's doing a science thing, trying to figure out like which one's the real one, which one's the clone. And in the room full of people, including the clone, he's just like, She's the clone. This is the real one. And it's like, dude, like, was there not like a, I don't know, gentler way or maybe like Cyclops, I need to like talk to you real quick. No, he's like, we're a family. (laughs) Okay. There are no secrets in family. Everyone needs to know. By the way, she's a clone. Yeah. And he's also like this Jean laying down. She's old. You not so much. Yeah. You're not so much. Something's up. I think it's really interesting. And I'm curious if we're ever, ever going to find out how long that they were separated for because I, I know spoiler in the comics. Um, this is the cool thing about it though. Like I know that they told these stories really briskly, but the original stories are there. So it's cool to like, just go watch them or read them and then come back to these. So you get like a cliff's notes version, but then you can get the whole thing. I really recommend reading. That's kind of cool stuff. Um, Scott, not so much, but what's it called? <laughs> it's the relationship between like Gene and Scott and everything he, his first marriage to Jean was to the clone. So like, there's like a running joke of like, is he going to have to have another wedding? <laughs> <laughs> is it still legally binding? Right. So it's like, when were they replaced? Was it after the Dark Phoenix saga? And when was that? How did she get captured? Exactly. I missed the Sinistar. Well, she faints a lot. So that's true. Kind of easy. Just, just fell like, out of the sky. Whoop. He's like, I got one. <laughs> I have a backup. Don't worry. I got the sleepy one. <laughs> yes. It is I, Mr. Sinister. Yeah. <laughs> who, who I feel like did not get enough screen time. But he got just enough, though. I feel like just for like a little intro, he was terrifying. I he did put not... a baby in, in green goop. I love that visual of him just being like, fuck them kids. <laughs> that is the most buoyant baby I've ever seen in my life. Because no matter what, that baby is just floating in the middle. I don't know. I don't know how buoyancy works, but... <laughs> I really loved it. I think I loved what they're doing with some of these characters because they have the whole history, right, of the comics up until now to work with. So, like, I'm curious to see how far in that we get. Mm -hmm. Um, There was one joke, and this is more for, like, kind of Krakoa era X-Men fans, but the when Jubilee was trying to figure out Sunspot's powers and she's like, do you like do you make like gold balls or like whatever? And she's like, that'd be weird. There is literally a character that makes gold balls then like he was a joke for a while because it's like what do you you do with that but in krakoa era he's used with the five mutants that can like bring people back from the dead so like his gold like embryo balls or whatever it's like that's where the clones get made in Ah. um but so it was just like a fun little easter egg there's throughout this whole thing there's so many Easter well i even feel like that conversation is an easter egg because in the first episode of the original series storm and rogue are talking to jubilee and, you know, Storm is like, I am mistress of the elements. My name is Storm. And she's like, my name is Jubilee. I blow stuff up. Yeah. Like, my name doesn't make sense like yours. <laughs> but they're pretty. Yeah. Da-da-da, back to yeah. dancing. So back to really horny and sexy moments. I'm 
kind of curious about Logan and Morph. Let's talk about Logan for a second. There's a couple scenes with Logan and Morph specifically. One, I'm loving Morph so much. He, they have not gotten a lot of screen time yet, and I want more. But there's the scene where he goes to Logan and Logan's in the tree and like he has chips and beer and he's like, oh, let's you know, hang out. And he's like, no. But then he's like, I'll turn it to stay He's for like, you. let's wrestle. Right. And they wrestle. And then in the third episode, when he goes to take a shower and short King, Harry King, Logan is butt naked in the shower. Morph like very like confidently and like without like seeming like they were going to push any boundaries was like, do you need me to help you with those hard to reach spots? I was like, uh, uh, wait, this is like beyond consent. This is past consent of like, there is consent. Well, like what I mean is like consent had already happened. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And this is after that. So I'm like, are they like, do they kiss? They might be <laughs> canoodling a little bit because let me tell you something. They are anytime they can rip Wolverine's costume up and show that hairy bot of his. Okay. It's not just chest hair, mama. It goes on the shoulders, down yeah. the arms, on the back. He is our little bear cub short king. It's in the intro. Like he's, he's in his underwear. He's in his underwear and then his costume comes on, which it seemed like it should be the reverse, but. It happens. <laughs> Speaking of the intro, weird that we didn't even mention it. The intro, the song, it is back and it is better than ever. It hits so hard. It's amazing. Just, I felt like I had to say that at some point during this. We have watched all three of these twice and we watched the theme song every single time. I am, There is no skipping. Well, no, I'm mad at Disney for even having a skip button. You don't put the skip button. Not for this. On that at all. No. No. And also the end credits where they do that thing where you never see all of them get selected and spin around. They do that on purpose. I, every single one, and I've watched it twice. I've been like, oh, they're going to do new ones when you pick up. Oh, it's the same ones. Nope. And please they torture let me see. you. Let me, I know what their powers are and their names. I want to see. That would be cool as a screensaver, wouldn't it? It would be. Right? Oh my God, I would love that. Are screensavers even a thing anymore? Yeah, I have one of jellyfish. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Mine, I guess my you just goes to sleep. Listener or watchers, you know how to do that. <laughs> just like send it to us. Please. I love that. <laughs> we need to know how. So if you could, I feel like this is going to be a question that's going to be, if you're listening to this on Spotify or even on whatever, you can just comment at us or email us or whatever. If you could, in these three episodes, be any of the mutants, any one of them, which one would you be? Hmm. Because remember, Storm lost her powers right now. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> don't, don't yell at me. <laughs> I think, well, oh my God. I'm going with Gambit. Wow, that's interesting. Because like right now, he's really not in the drama. He bakes, that's he's why you want baking. to be. He's baking, he's wearing crop tops, okay? He has a beautiful hair, head of ginger hair. Yeah. So I'm going, because for a minute, I was going between Wolverine and Beast because of the hairy thing. But I think I'm going Gambit. No, you could be anybody. You don't have to be who you think you are. No, I'm, well, I just feel drawn to them. Mm, I see. I see. Because, you know, but I'm not, a, I'm not as smart as Beast. Anyway, <laughs> who would you be? Oh, man. Jean Grey. No. <laughs> Madeline Pryor. Madeline no. Pryor. The Goblin Queen. <laughs> the Goblin. I mean, I don't even care. It's like, she is sexy as hell. And she's like, I'm the Goblin Queen. It's like, yes, you are. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know why, but Yeah. <laughs> I don't get it, but yes, <laughs> you absolutely are. Sure, we can name it ourselves whatever I, we want. Yeah, me too. I, I'm the uh, I, I'm the cream puff king, like whatever. <laughs> I don't know where you're going with that. <laughs> that could have got real bad. Um, no, okay, so I, I'd probably be Beast. I just love that he's like doing his own thing. Yeah. And like he does really cool stuff, but like most of the time he's just like tinkering on his he like, puts on his classical music. Yeah, and puts on his... I love I love that he just puts on his coat and he just still is in underwear. I, I love yes. it. I love one of the first times we see him is when uh, Sunspot is like resting and recuperating and he's walking on the ceiling towards him. He just... You know, the thing about Beast is that he is Beast. Yeah. He is truly himself and he has accepted who he is. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? He's just living in it. Yeah. I love, I love him. I love that. Because I feel like... I would want that life of like, cause I always like to work on things, but I feel like I don't, 
ever have enough time and stuff like that. And it feels like he can always just work on whatever he wants. And also just be in his underwear and a coat. Like, that's amazing. Yeah. So blue. That's so cool. Yeah. <sighs> He's like, oh, you can, what did he say? You can call me my gnome de plume yeah. beast or whatever he said. It was so good. <laughs> I love when he's also like quoting random things. Yeah. And he's like, Mark Twain. <laughs> he's like, I'm that smart. <laughs> it's like, I've read that too, beast. Like, calm down. No. He's <laughs> like, listen, I got Mr. and Mrs. Summers fighting all the time. <laughs> I got to hold it together. Yeah. I'm the only one. Okay. One of the last sexy moments that I'll talk about is... One, the fight scene between the Goblin Queen and Magneto was breathtakingly amazing. Mm -hmm. um, the amount of colors and movement and everything was just and so cool. costume gets torn up. That's where I was going. Thanks for ruining my last sexy Sorry. moment. Sorry. <laughs> yes, when he lands on the ground and it's for two seconds and he's just kind of bare chest, ripped as hell. And I'm just like, why? You guys, we know he's already sexy and you just had to take off some of his costume. <laughs> They said, look at his nipple. And we were like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that scene was so cool. And I love that they were able to showcase Madeline Pryor's powers that are outside of Jean. Mm. Because she has those powers that Jean has. But she has those like extra like sorcery. and Yeah, she can like hypnotize people to mm -hmm. fight for her. Sorry, Morph. So, so good. Which is really sad for Morph because that's like his whole thing. It's like he was kidnapped and then tortured by... It's um, Mr. Sister. Mr. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, oh, you're fucked up. But we got to see Magic and Lady Deathstrike and Psylocke and Colossus and a couple other people that I'm forgetting at the moment. But I was just Who so Who was happy. the one that raised all their hands? Oh, uh, that was funny. <laughs> that was really funny. I might be getting Mortal Kombat characters yes. mixed up. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I don't one. know if you definitely are, but I could see that happen. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, yeah. I mean, to wrap this up and to make this like a review... Fantastic. I think that this is like, this validates, like, how do I say it? Like, this validates the nostalgia, right? Mm. It's like, this is the thing that I hope that they do because there's so many like legacy projects that they do. Of, like, it's a continuation of the thing that happened 50 years ago and it never works out well. This is working out in every possible way. I know they have so many more episodes to do, but if they keep it up with like this, I think it might be like the best thing Marvel's ever made since the MCU was produced. Wowzers. <laughs> I, hey, I'm just saying, it's just, it has everything that I want. Yeah. The X-Men. <laughs> I, I know, I'm with you. The X-Men really, you know, we've been living in the Avengers world for so long with the MCU. It's so exciting to get back to the X-Men. Yeah. And I think that we're getting into our first two-parter, I believe, coming I think up. there's two... It's multiple like a, parters it's like a two-parter and then i think there's like a three or a four-parter towards the end of Which the season they had to do well now it's officially yeah x-men from yeah. the 90s because like that was the thing that was unprecedented about kids television was that like it was multiple parts mm -hmm. like you had to watch the multiple parts yeah. to understand that oh, so cool yeah i just i just love that they're doing it and some of the names of the episodes coming up, I'm like, oh, they're doing that one. Okay. This let is me be also let me say something. Go ahead. World. How is it that I get to work at around 8 a.m. and there are already oh, yeah. ass loads of yeah. spoilers? Yeah. Holy I mean, smokes. There are the unfortunate thing is that it's not coming out at like normal time, our time and everybody's time. And there's people that just it's like midnight and they're like, oh, I get to watch it. And it's like 3 a.m. our time. Stop it. Okay, you just, we just can't go on social media until we watch it. That sounds like my job. I know it is your job. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I always have to like kind of like watch something and I'm like, okay, I got it. Because I'd be mad if I get spoiled. Goblin Queens, I got spoiled with her transformation. Yeah, her magical. Her shoujo. Her magical girl transformation was the first thing that came up on social media. And I was like, well. I mean, I knew she was Madeline Pryor, but like, I wanted to see it. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to be like, I was yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I'm very excited to see where they go. They have packed so much story and so much stuff into three 30 minute episodes. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm, I'm here for it. We yeah. have quite a few to do. So we're going to be releasing these on Saturday mornings. Get and your favorite cereal. Yeah. I think that's it, right? Any yeah. final thoughts? No, that's it. It's just a lot of fun. The nostalgia point is just overflowing. It makes me want to start collecting action figures again. Oh, I went through our old um, 
our uh, collectible cards from the comics and I was trying to like piece together the X-Men team. We didn't have all of them from like the current, like the ones that are in this one, but we have most of them. Um, I might post them. We'll see. But you know, I love those fun. cards. Oh, they're so fun. Yeah. All <laughs> right. So till next week, we'll see you next Saturday. Goodbye. Bye.